What is up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks for being here, being subbed. If you're not, hit the button. And if you're listening on YouTube, hit the like. It's like walking in the room and hitting that light switch. Let's brighten up the place and get into this conversation. I wanted to I, I wanted to share my thoughts on a few things when it came to this interview that Funky Dineva did with Carlos King. Now, it definitely accomplished the goal of what Carlos wanted, which was to get the views. So here, here's my thing when it comes to Carlos King. And a lot of people feel a number of different ways about him, but my personal opinion is my personal opinion on him. I, I honestly feel not knowing him personally, of course, but I can draft my own personal opinion based on what I see publicly about him. To me, he does come across as pretty much morally reprehensible. He has his stamp on approval of a number of things that has been controversial, not to his benefit. And he kind of shies away from those situations if and when they're brought up. Now, I'll go back as far as Hollywood Divas, which is one of maybe, I would say, the first shows that he produced and executive produced without being a part of the Bravo Network because he came to be known, I believe, as being a part of the Real Housewives of Atlanta mainly. And also, I heard... (laughs) I could be wrong, but this is what I heard. The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Now, if you all watch The Real Housewives of New Jersey, which I will admit the first several seasons I watch, and to this day, I've watched the old episodes. I heard that if you watch the first season when Daniel Staub was on the show, we all know the controversial scene with Teresa flipping the table, Teresa Giudice, that he was under the table and handed Danielle Staub the book that she brought out to all of the others. And they were so shocked. Like, I can't believe she's doing this right here. That's what I heard. I could be wrong, right? Hollywood Divas, a show that I I actually did watch as well. I liked it. Um, But Elise Neal, an actress who was on the show, a light fixture allegedly fell on her head. I guess he didn't have the proper insurance that he was supposed to have. And she sued the crap out of maybe him and the network and all the others involved. And so, and then she was no longer a part of that. We did hear about how he stole Candy's story for Escape because he was planning on possibly doing a movie about it. And how he presented himself to Candy's mom in a way that was deceptive and when she talked about it, actually she talked about it on the House of Aaron YouTube channel. That's where we first heard her really confront that situation. And when he was asked about it, he danced around the story and he's never addressed it directly. Those are just a few instances. And then in present day, he's been doing the Messy Mondays with Dr. Heavenly, which has been just personally to his benefit because... He's making money off of that. He's probably, I would say, making more money doing YouTube than he is doing television. That's my personal opinion. And we all know how Dr. Heavenly can be. And she doesn't really care about anybody. She'll confront you, (laughs) whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. She will confront you. And she's confronted him about a, a, a few different things when they've done the Messy Mondays together. And he will dance around the situation or the question and, you know, and not really given a direct answer. Winter Harris, who came out and exposed some of his ways from when she was on the show Love and Marriage DC and how he pretty much allowed her to be verbally attacked by men. We've seen his treatment of Melody Cherie Rogers on Love and Marriage Huntsville. People have their personal feelings about her. I am not a melometer that people, you know, they label themselves that are like 100% 10 toes down for her no matter what. I'm not a melometer, but I definitely do my best to be on the side of right. And I've seen how she's been treated on that show. So I am not one of these people that will sit in judgment of her attitude or some things that she may have said or done on that show because I, I definitely with my own eyes and spirit have seen how she has been personally attacked 
on that show, not just by the other husbands, but by her own now ex-husband and father of her four children. And he has allowed it for the sake of his pockets. You know, that man has been absolutely terroristic in his ways, how he has come at her and he's allowed all of those things to happen. And when she initially approached him and I guess she started going through some things in her marriage and she decided she was going to back off from it. He was like, I'm going to make sure you're good. I'm going to make sure you're protected. And he, you know, he really didn't. And so I could see why she's backing away from what I could see from that show and that platform and doing her own thing because he cannot be trusted. And, you know, I I just see a lot of stuff, but honestly, my heart broke when I heard that Kiki Jabbar, she lost her life. And at this very moment in time, I don't believe an autopsy report has come back yet. So I don't know what they're going to label the cause of death or rule her cause of death as of what it will be. But some people have their thoughts that they believe that it was self-inflicted due to the the trauma that she experienced while being on that show, being a part of that show, and just, you know, not really having the care and the concern given to her based on her fragile condition. Now, ironically, Funky Dineva, he dragged that woman in death And that was disgusting to me. And some people said, well, he had the right to share how he felt about it and whatever. There's a line that I feel you shouldn't cross. And while I will say I am not a proponent of people giving false praise on someone after they've passed away, or if you really didn't like the person acting as if you did because they've passed away, I 100% am understanding of people not being fake and phony because someone passed away. But I also am not a fan of someone dragging someone after they passed away because one, they're not here to defend themselves. And two, they still have family and loved ones that are still here. So how was that showing respect to them? You may not respect the person that has passed away, but you're not showing any kind of care, guard, or respect for the family that's still here. Carlos King He got what he wanted out of doing the sit-down interview with Funky Dineva, but I really don't believe that he understands what may be coming after the fact. And then he's always on to the next thing. Everything about him is just about the cream, the cash rules, everything around me, me, you know, the dollar bill. He, He really doesn't care about people. I don't follow him on social media, but I peeked in on his Instagram the other day and I saw that he was doing a ride along with NeNe Leakes. I'm just like, everything for him is just about what is the next thing? What is the next opportunity? I wouldn't be surprised if he's working on something with NeNe because I don't believe that he was just doing that with her for fun. I believe it's definitely about something with regards to maybe his next podcast tour stop. He's done, I think, three so far. He did the first one using Melody because he knew that people were going to show up for her, but it was supposed to be his thing, right? So he was giving her her fake flowers by crowning her and, you know, and acting like she's like the prom queen and celebrating her or whatever. But he was really being messy all along because he brought out two people who are currently on this current season of Love and Marriage Huntsville. I'm not watching it, but two controversial figures on the show, both new characters on the show, but one of them who was in a relationship with Destiny, who is currently on the show. And I still don't even understand why she's even on the show anymore, honestly. But yeah, he brought the woman that married her ex and her ex out on the stage at Melody's guest tour stop for his podcast. How messy is that? You know, like he just does so many things that are messy. And if the interview was about Funky Dineva and yeah, okay, He did have experience on TGIF. So obviously, you know, you ask about that. But why didn't he ask her? I say her. (laughs) I did not mean anything by that, I swear. Why didn't he ask Funky about some other things? Um, The 
the past drug use. I say past because I'm assuming it's in the past. I don't know if it's in the present. About the stint on Sister Circle that he, I believe, was fired from. You know, like a number of different things that he could have talked about. But he spent a lot of time, I feel, even if it was only five minutes, that was a lot of time, talking about Armand Wiggins and asking questions about Armand because he was not even a part of the show when Armand was there, right? But the messiness of Carlos, there really is no bounds, I feel. And I feel that it's going to ultimately be to his own detriment. And I'm not sitting here wishing anything on him. I'm just basically saying that's how life works. The seeds that we plant, we are going to reap a harvest from them. And there's a lot to be said, even still about the untimely passing of Kiki Jabbar and how I feel he handled that. I, I'm i quite sure that he wasn't expecting that to happen, but unfortunately it did. And so for him to come out, arms swinging, tongue lashing about how people need to respect people's grieving processes and how they ha- it's like I don't even really believe that you were grieving that woman so get up out of here with that BS and also when it comes to the actual shows that he is doing it to me doesn't seem like he puts a whole lot of time into that as much as he does time into his blogging career and for Funky Dineva to sit in judgment of others on YouTube, I'm actually going to go into that separately because I have my thoughts about that as well. And while Armand, when he did his response to Funky Dineva being interviewed by Carlos King, I do believe that some of the heat and the smoke should have been laid at Carlos's um, feet as well. And I do believe that because he just kind of got caught up in the moment of everything that he was saying with regards to Funky Dineva, because Funky Dineva was, you know, really sharing what he, I won't even say what he really felt, but, you know, sharing his thoughts based on the questions that Carlos gave. I do believe some of that heat should have been, you know, should have been for Carlos as well. And that's probably one of the reasons why he said he's never going to do an interview with Carlos King. He has no desire, no interest whatsoever to do anything with Carlos. And I think he could also pick up and tell that Carlos kind of got a thing for him. Because let's be honest, Armand is an attractive young man. He is. And we know Carlos, he's been salivating over him for a little minute now. So I'm quite sure he knows about that. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to talk about that. And and I'll end it here and say this. It's my opinion! Well, guys, you can let me know your thoughts about Carlos King in all of this when it comes to this Funky Dineva interview. Thank you guys so much for being here, liking and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until next time, I wanted to keep it brief, beautiful. And now I'm going to say bye. Don't wanna talk, don't wanna see